So now that we have wrapped up our random color VOP asset, let's turn our attention to the random texture VOP asset. Once we have these two assets complete, we can put together the final custom shader that we're going to use to drive our audience. So you may recognize this particular network looking very similar to the network we put together in the last video when assembling the random color VOP asset. The only real difference comes in with all of the texture nodes instead of the constant nodes, as well as our parameter where we're importing our UVs and the vector to float where we're converting our UVs over to the S and T values. And then finally, coming out of the switch, we have to take that vector vector four info and split it out to a vector and to a float so we can take out our color as well as our alpha. So that's the only real differences. Let's go ahead and jump over into Houdini and put this guy together. Awesome. So I'm going to jump into Houdini and since these two networks are so similar, I'm going to reuse quite a lot of the nodes. Sounds good. First thing I'm going to do though, since we did drop in another copy of our random color asset, to delete out that second copy we created. And then I'm going to jump down inside our random color. I'm going to grab everything except for our sub output and our sub input. So let's grab everybody else. So that's all of our nodes except for our input and output. I'm going to control C to copy them. I'm going to jump up outside of that asset and just move out to some space. Control V to paste them. Now the first thing I'm going to do is relink our sphere ID and global seed. So let's grab our sphere ID. And if you recall that right, wired into the first int to float and our global seed, left click on the output there and rewire this into our second int to float. I'm also going to then delete out uh, the expressions that are on our local seed and our num colors. If you recall, when we promoted them up to our asset, it would automatically create the expressions. We no longer have these parameters because we're no longer in an asset. So I'm simply going to right click and come down to delete channels on both our local seed and our num colors. With that, we can now delete out these color constants and replace them with textures. So I'm going to delete out all five of our color constants. And I'm going to create a new texture vop. So enter and enter. And I'm going to rename this to something like text map one. Now we are going to be dealing with RGBA values. I'm going to leave a default to the mandrill.pick, which is Houdini's default image. And we don't need to do anything else on our texture VOP itself other than drive its U and V coordinates with the S and T parameters. So let's bring in our UV coordinates. We've all seen this done before. So I'm going to create a parameter. And this parameter VOP I'm going to rename to UV import. It's going to be a three floats vector with the parameter name of UV, both in lowercase. The parameter label, I'm going to call UV coords, and I'm going to check invisible. And I'm going to take the output of this guy into a vector to float. So let's right click on the output and create a vector to float. If it will give me a vector to float, there we go. Enter to accept that. Enter to drop that into our network. I'll rename this to UV coords split and take our U coordinate and wire that into S and our V coordinate into T. So with this first texture map set up to take in UVs, I can control C to copy, control V to paste, and we can create texture maps two through five. So I'm gonna create two, three, four, and five. And we can take the color output, which you'll notice is a lighter green than our floats. It's also a different green to when we're dealing with um, vectors. I'm looking for a, there we go. It's a different green to when we're dealing with vectors. And that's because this is a four float vector. It's a homogeneous vector. So let's take our color output that has red, green, blue, and alpha and wire that into our input. You'll notice that the data types of both the inputs and the result are now reflecting the fact that it's a four float vector. And we can take color two into input two three into input three, four, there we go, four into input four, and finally five into input five. And we don't have to worry about regenerating any of our random number generations since that was covered in the previous video. Did you uh, actually catch five? Just curious. Okay. That's five? Yeah. It's a little hard to see when we're zoomed all the way back out. So Yeah. 
course. But we do need to take this result and split it so that we have a both a f- uh, effector for our color and the float for our alpha. And there's a really nice flop that lets us do that. So we can right click and wire this into a vector for to vector to vector. Really not useful when we don't have the other the thing pop up. So let's find our convert tab and grab vector four to vector and drop that into our network. So now we have our vector, which contains our red, green, and blue, and our float containing our alpha. So with that, we can collapse this down into an asset. So I'm going to grab all of these nodes that are for our texture switching asset, and I'm going to push Shift C to collapse them down into a subnet, and we can now bring the subnet up to here. And I'm going to rename this subnet to random texture. And you'll notice we have no outputs from our random texture subnet, but that's not a problem. We can push enter to jump down inside. We can find our sub output vop. Let's just move our sub input over to the side and grab our sub output vop. And we can take our vector, which we know is our color, and wire that into next. And we can take our fval4, we know that's alpha, and wire this into next. We can also select the sub output to rename these. So I'm going to rename our vector to color. And I'm going to rename our fval4, which is our alpha. And also give it a label of alpha. Now to match with uh, the other one, I'm going to actually use lowercase at the beginning just to match with our other assets. So if we now jump up, we'll see we've got color and color and alpha. So we can now create this as a digital asset. So just as we did with our random color, right click, come down to create digital asset. I'm going to give this the name of random texture. We'll leave the label as random texture. I'll find our shaders.otl file that contained our other color uh, asset. We can accept that and then accept. This will bring up the parameters just as before. I'm going to promote up our um, number of maps, so our number colors, which in this case I am going to rename to num maps since we're dealing with texture maps this time. So num maps and num maps. And let's grab the integer to default, right click and export parameter to type properties. Now I did have the prefix checked, so let's just rename all this. So this is going to be num maps with the label num maps and for future we'll uncheck prefix name and prefix label awesome we want to make sure this guy is locked between one and five so that we can only select between one and five textures so that's our num maps we do want to grab our local seed right click and export this to our type properties oops excuse me and name this to seed and a label of seed, and I'll give this a range of zero through a thousand. And then finally, I'm going to export our five texture map parameters for our five texture vops. So I'm going to right click and export parameter to type properties for our first texture, our second texture, our third texture, fourth, and fifth. And with that, I do want to rename these. So I'm going to rename these to texture one, texture two, texture three, texture four, and texture five. And I'll move the seed below these as with the colors. And I'm also going to set up the disable whens for two through five so they reference and num maps. So disable when num maps is less than two for our texture two. Control C is gonna be less than three for texture three, four for texture four, and five for texture five. So exactly the same as we saw in the previous video. So with those in place, I can accept out our uh, asset. We can see some of these parameters get linked up. If we jump up a level, we'll see that we have the ability to specify between one and five texture maps we have that seed parameter so let's set this down just to something like two texture maps and let's take just the color output of this guy and for now wire it through to our cf on our outputs and with this color output let's grab our 
simple texture that we're using for the lead character for now, since we don't really have an ideal texture to assign to our audience because we know we're going to be building this up through layers. And right now I just want to do a test of our texture asset. So I'm going to grab the ball character. And just to test the random switching between multiple maps, I'm also going to grab something like a wood floor. So we've got two textures being referenced. And with that, we can do a render and note that we haven't yet created UVs on our audience. So when we do a render, we're not going to get the textures coming in properly. That's as expected. We don't have UVs on our audience. We can jump up three times to SOP level. And here where we're creating our audience sphere, let's wire this into a UV texture SOP. And I'll rename this to audience UVs. And we know, like with our character, we're going to be creating polar UVs. Now, there is a slight difference to before, but we'll deal with that in a second. Let's come in here and just render a small portion of the audience, and it'll become very apparent, at least for the guys that have the character texture, what the slight alteration needs to be on these UVs. Our audience are facing 90 degrees to where we'd like them to be. And we can see we have got some audience members that are apparently made out of wood. But yeah, these guys are facing 90 degrees to where we'd like them to be. We can simply do an offset in X, and that will shift our texture around the surface. And if we think of an offset of one taking us right back to where we are, we need to do an offset of a quarter. And that offset of a quarter would therefore be 0.25. So if we offset in X on our UV, by 0.25 and re-render, we'll see that now everybody is facing the correct way because we know they should be looking at the knoll that is positioned around here. And with that, that's everything we need for our texture asset. But before we jump out of this video, I do want to update the definitions onto disk and then match the current definition. So I'm going to jump back inside our material, inside our shader, grab our random color, right click, save operator type, right click and match current definition, and grab our random texture, right click, save operator type, right click, match current definition. And with that, if there's anything you'd like to add? No, I believe we've only got one video left as far as the custom shader is concerned. Yes, we do. And that is the creation of the custom shader that's going to be making use of these two new asset vops. So with that, that's going to wrap up this video. Thanks a lot.